it's mid-July, it is time for a refresh of my onion bed so that I can start using it for some late summer crops. To do that though, there's a bit of clambering about and setting up I need to do first. You haven't seen this magic corner since Kate's done some work on it. I'll maybe bring you along just because it's really awesome. So we are in the Chilutiri. This is the wee corner you see me sitting in. The chair is here and this is the bit on the left that you never see. It is basically the side of the shed and Kate is awesome for keeping things tidy and finding little brilliant spaces to use. So in order to keep things neat and tidy in the garden, she uses the side in the back of the shed for storage for all the little bits and bobs we need that we don't want to be out all the time. And to do that, she's done this system so you can't really see behind there and it is awesome. And it's this. So all those times when you see Kate just disappearing and reappearing again with like handy bits of wood and stuff, she's coming through here. So it's things like all the ladders are on hooks on the side of the shed out of the way. Um, my my pretend potting bench, which is really just a big workbench that we share. Um, what I need is there, so there's a, there's a kind of like step platform, but also Don't go out front of the house. Yeah, it's not the weather to be clambering about. Oh, just explaining that, I don't know if you can hear Kate. Today is apparently going to be the hottest day on record ever for us and we're going to break all the temperatures. The front of our house faces south and is in full sun. Kate has just been out there deadheading and came in and said, oh my God, don't go out front. It's pretty hot out here. But this is what I went in for, the sawhorses. You guys have seen me do this loads. So you guys know the sawhorses and you've seen me just put big boards on it and I use this when I'm sewing and potting up and all that kind of thing and I need a surface. Same thing today, but... It's not for sewing and potting on and stuff. I'm going to use it for drying my onions. Oh. The plan is just to get the onions out of this bed, get them in that rack to get them dried. And I'll give you details in a second. So you guys know the story about the onions, the spring onions, the garlic and everything. Basically, I'm pulling all these out now together. Only a few of them have stalks that have fallen over, but I grew all of these from sets. And as loads of folk know, sets have a tendency to bolt. All of mine bolted. So they're not really going to be great for storing and keeping. Um, up until now, we've just been pulling onions out of the bed whenever we needed an onion and using it fresh but I want this bed so it's coming out. <sighs> it's not bad though. So as I said, a bit different because these aren't going to store, hence I'm lifting them, getting them ready to just take them in and use them. But what I am going to do is the traditional thing of trying to dry them, trying to get the outside skins dried a bit, um, just to help as much as I can. This 
is one of those waffles I was talking about that we use in those doors. In fact, it's the other door. Um, and I'm going to use it just to put the onions through and leave them out in the air and just get them as dry as I can. So there we go. Uh, like I say, it's not all proper and everything, but it'll do the job. It'll just let these guys dry off a bit before I then trim them up, clean them up, take them indoors, all that kind of stuff. Right. <sighs> Gives me my bed back. God, it's hot. <sighs> so um, that's kind of as far as we got filmed because um, it was just too hot and all the camera equipment just started overheating and shutting off. But you didn't miss much because not long after we overheated and shut off as well. So I've still got a couple of bits and bobs that need done. And we've got some check overs to do in the garden as well because we've got a bit of a big event next week in the garden as well. But first, I said the whole purpose was that I was getting my bed back. It's because I want to use that for some of my kind of late summer autumn stuff. So mostly it's going to be things like all my kind of like greens and salads and some more beans and all that kind of stuff. So that's what I'm going to do now before it gets too hot again. So when it's like this, remember, whether it's shade cloth or paint or blinds or whatever, Remember and shade your plants so they don't get burnt. So I suppose let's start with the good news. I've got beans. Oh, finally, I've got beans. And so knees. I need a mat these days. Okay, so the good news then, we do have beans. This is Sprite, the new variety I tried because my Fandango seeds obviously had passed and just let me down. Um, as you can see, pretty much there's probably a good 80-90% germination in there, so that is awesome. They're going in this bed, and I'm going to sow some more because, well, we're starting to get beans on the original Fandango that I had left. There are starting to get beans on the little plants that I bought, but it's not looking great. There's not masses on there, so I'm going to just try and keep going. It's maybe for Scotland. This is difficult. I used to always say that you had to get things in by mid-July at the latest. But I swear the last three or four years I've seen such changes in the weather that we might actually manage to start thinking later in the season. So I'm just going to try it and see. What's the worst that can happen? It either works or it doesn't. The world's not going to end. So that's the good news. The bad news... Um, do you remember you guys saw me planting loads of lovely salady crops? So I've got my cut and come again and my land cress and my peas and things. Well, um, those couple of days of just crazy weather, everything frazzled. <laughs> Actually totally frazzled in a day. So it um, looks like I'm starting again with a lot of this. So uh, I'm going to do that in this bed. Um, and also, I've got some awesome seeds that the lovely Baron sent me over. Um, so thank you so much, Baron. He sent me a wee birthday treat. It came a wee bit early because it's not my birthday in the next weekend. Um, but he sent me some seeds, among which are spinach. And I was thinking of giving spinach a try anyway, so I'm going to try the ones he sent. Because um, he said that no matter what he does, he cannot get spinach to work. So let's just see. Um, I'm hoping soon this late it might be okay, because spinach is famous for bolt and it doesn't like the hot weather but we'll try it and see first things first then let's get the beans in now oh you guys know i just took a massive crop out of here so the soil is depleted so i have already added in a little bit of fresh compost to add some organic matter and i've added a little bit of blood and bone into the soil as well just to try and replace some of the nutrition that's been lost
So there we go. First bean is in. Okay, so beans are in. Like I say, we'll just have to see how it goes. Um, the pak choy, I just thought I haven't actually spoken to you about this, so I'll tell you about this. This pak choy was the one that I sowed months ago and it's been in the greenhouse all this time. Um, and it was just at the point where it had been in a pot too long, it was looking awful. I don't know if it will survive because it is pretty stressed. I've taken out, sorry, I've taken off all the outside leaves that are totally gone. And we'll just have to wait and see if the centre perks up again um, and see how it goes. <laughs> see? Yeah, this is it. You just stick stuff in the ground and see. There's no point stressing over it. Right, I'm going to get a couple of things in here then. Like I said, we have real issues with things being frazzled. So I have got loads of land cress still that's looking okay and I just don't want to keep it in the greenhouse. So I'm just going to put that as that square here. Going to just risk it. They're too small yet to actually move about individually. I'm just going to try it and see. And again, what is the worst that can happen? Label. Also, for those of you who've seen the last video with Kate doing the whole thing about my pak choy label that was here, it's because I had pak choy here before and it all got munched. So, you know, there is the chance the slugs will just eat this. Right, this is not proper gardening method. So don't copy me. Like I say, I'm just taking a risk. Some of these wee plants will manage. There's quite a few got frazzled in there. And like I say, they're too small to move as individual plants. It's one of those things. We all have wee things we do just randomly. This is one of mine. It's worked before. As long as you make sure it's in there and it gets a good water, sometimes it works. Those two, I don't think there's any point in trying to save. So two types of spinach from the lovely barren. I've got spinach Bloomsdale from Dollar Seed and I've got American spinach that's an MI Gardener heirloom seed. So apparently this, the MI Gardener one, uh, is 45 to 55 days till maturity, so that's quite cool. So that's just over a month, so I should have time to get some harvesting from this. Should take up to 14 days to germinate. So let's do one row of this, one row of that, just to see. Like I say, I was going to grow spinach anyway, so this is just another Eli experiment. And it's good for Baron to see if it'll grow here. He says he struggled. So I'm just going to do a line here. Just put a drip. Okay. So let's just see. So that, before I forget, is American spinach. Or I'll just put MI Gardener spinach and then I'll know which one. <laughs> it's funny, I'm going to put it on this side as well. So it ends there. MI Gardener is one of those big American channels that I've kind of watched some of their videos. I wonder if he realises that there's somebody in Scotland sowing some of these seeds. Wonder if he even knows where Scotland is. Right, this one is Dollar Seed Spinach Bloomdale. No details in this one, and I've not got my phone to check, so hey, experiment. Let's just see. Random fact, spinach is one of the words, as a dyslexic person, that I struggle with. I, I can't get spinach. Random fact you probably didn't even want to know. Okay, so I've got then my beans. Hopefully, we're going to give me some beans. I've got my pak choy. Hopefully, won't die. My land cress Hopefully, won't die. And I've got two types of spinach that will hopefully grow. Um, and I've got a wee patch in here, which is where the next lot of bits and bobs will go if need be. Um, I'm going to put, I'm going to grow another lot of beans in the greenhouse, just to bring them on, like I say, as a just in case. 
and I'm going to bring on some more lettuces. But at the minute, this is all I've this is all I've got for space at the minute. So I'm doing that continuous thing where I'm waiting on other things passing to make space. So we've started harvesting the carrots. Um, there's a, a great big bit about that size of that bed is carrots. So when they're gone, we're not going to sow any more carrots, even though a lot of folk will be at this time of year. Um, we're not going to bother, but really chuffed with the carrots we got. Um, so that was the Amsterdam forcing ones that I actually sowed out here early spring as an experiment. We weren't sure if they would germinate. They have come up a treat, gorgeous carrots. Um, and I tell you what, at the end of the video, I'll give you a very, very quick, like a minute and a half long, whatever. Here's the recipe we made with the carrots. Um, what else have I got in there? I've got beetroot in there. Now, the carrots and the beetroot that are in there are going to get used this weekend, because as I said, we're having a garden party this weekend. So they will get used for salads and hummus and all that kind of thing this weekend. I'm not going to plant any more of them. That will then be where I plant more of my greens and what have you for coming into autumn. And I'll just grab these. And that is me for out here at the moment. One of the downsides of dealing with all of the onions is the compost bin is less than fragrant. Strong of onions. Okay then, so I'd said how my onions were from sets and had bolted. Bolting's quite common when you grow from sets. It's fine, you don't have to bin your onions when that happens. It just means they're not going to store. So normally you would dry your onions for a few weeks and then you could store them for ages and use them as you needed them. Can't do that with the ones that are bolted. So instead, people do different things to store them. A lot of folk told me to dehydrate them and use them as onion powder. It's not really our thing. We tend, we grow because we like fresh seasonal food. So we're not really into the whole powders and all that kind of stuff. But one of the things we do is we do a lot of freezing. So I've said to you before, we make lots of tomato sauces and soups and things and we store them in the freezer. I'm going to do the same thing with onions now. So how do you like them onions? Two sacks of onions. Um, they were out getting dried a bit in the sun and that might have confused some of you. I wasn't trying to dry them in order to store them because I'm going to put them in the freezer. I was just drying them to help get them clean, get the skins off, that kind of thing. So they were out for a few days in that basking sun and then we got rain so they get moved into the shed. So this is them getting chopped up now. So basically all I'm going to do is give them a clean and just chop them up and I'm going to put them into some freezer bags. But they're handy for doing this because they can go into the freezer flat and then whenever we need onions, we just grab whatever we need from the freezer. It's dead awesome. Um, I'm obviously not going to sit and chop onions and let you watch it for 20 minutes, so I'll get you to come back in a sec when this is all done. But yeah, also, you liking the new t-shirts then? This is a new one in the store, but it's inspired by you guys because, do you remember I said in a video, don't listen to weirdos like me on the internet? I got a hilarious comment, I can't remember who it was now, but one of you guys said, but you're our favourite weirdo on the internet. So you inspired this t-shirt, which says, gardening advice from my favourite weirdo on the internet. And then it's got the channel logo. So thank you, because it's all the wee funny things that happen in the comments that inspire me and keep me going. Right. problem is when you grow a lot of veggies it's finding space to store them oh, hurrah for July and all the growing and all the especially the harvest like those gorgeous straight carrots I was telling you about went in this carrot salad awesome carrot salad using your beautiful homegrown carrots um, the ugly ones you'll have to just eat they won't work in this 
if you have one of these speed peeler things, use this to cut ribbons in the carrot. Or if you've got one of the extra fancy ones like we do that will actually cut noodles, use the noodle side. Add them to a big salad bowl. 40 mils of olive oil, one garlic clove, either grate it or mince it as fine as you can. Thumb sized piece of ginger, again grate that in. If you have fresh lemons, you can get the juice and the zest of a whole lemon or just shop bought lemon juice if that's all you've got. Tablespoon of white wine vinegar, roughly a tablespoon of honey, a little salt to season and give it a really good shake to emulsify. Dress your carrots. You won't need all of this dressing, but it keeps in the fridge. Some fresh chopped parsley from the garden and give that all a good mix. Get all your carrot nice and coated. So it's basically just a carrot salad with lemon juice, ginger, honey, a bit of garlic as the dressing. Leave it in the bowl till you've served up everything else and it'll gather all those flavours and it is awesome and zingy and perfect for a hot summer's day. And we are still getting so many tomatoes you wouldn't believe and the peppers have started ripening now as well. Um, I'll tell you about what I'm doing with all of that next time. But for now, oh, as I said, we're having a bit of a garden party next weekend as a celebration for my birthday. First time in years, in fact, since before lockdown happened. This used to be an annual thing. So Kate and I need to go around and start just checking everything the way it needs to be. All sort of them looking fabulous for our friends visiting. So yeah, so next week then we... There you are. Uh, next week, might there be building and painting? There might be. Who knows? There you go. There might be. There might not be. We'll see. It depends how much of a party we have. Okay then, folks. We will see you next week. See ya.